today we're looking at a hypothesis test for a contingency table. We're still in the chapter discussing the analysis of two categorical variables, and we'll be looking at how to perform a hypothesis test for that type of data. So to lay out this scenario for you, I am interested in testing whether or not a artificial sweetener called xylitol will affect um, whether or not a student gets a middle ear infection. I'm going to start step one by identifying the population. Here it would be all daycare children. And then my sample would be the group that's going to help me make my inference on that population, which would be 533 daycare children. Now we have been working on writing a parameter definition in step one, but for this type of data, um, we are looking for just a relationship between two variables, so we won't define a parameter. So then when we get to step two, we'll write out our null and alternative hypotheses. So remember that the null is a statement of nothing happening or no relationship. So here our null will be there is no relationship between our two variables, which is going to be xylitol and middle ear infections. Whereas the alternative for this type of data is going to be something happening or a relationship between our two variables and here would be xylitol and middle ear infections. So notice that the difference between null and alternative, H sub O there is no, and with H sub A there is A relationship. So then when we get to testing in step three, our first thing will be to state the assumption. So we assume that the sampling distribution of the chi-square statistic has a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equaling the number of rows so for these problems, I have placebo gum, xylitol gum, and xylitol lozenge. So I have three rows, so it's number of rows minus one, and then number of columns minus one. So here it's yes or no in my columns. So I have no or yes, so that's two columns. Remember you don't include either the total row or the total column. So we have two as our degrees of freedom. Now, when you check your conditions, remember that the conditions are that less than 20% of cells can have an expected count less than five, and no expected count can be less than one. Well, at this point, we only have what are called observed counts, and so I actually will have to calculate expected counts for each of these cells. Expected count, you are going to do row total here is 178 times your column total which is 416 divided by the grand total which is 533. So for this cell I have an expected count of 138.93. So I will continue to do that for each of the cells. Now that we have all of the expected counts, we can check our conditions. So I see up here that I have no cells that have an expected count less than one or five. So when I check my conditions, I can say that less than 20% of cells have an expected count less than five, and no expected count is less than one. Now I could also just say that my minimum expected count equals 38.63 to verify those conditions. 
Next in C, I will go through the process of calculating my chi-squared test statistic. And remember to do that, I am going to be taking observed minus expected for each cell and then dividing by squaring that difference and then dividing by the correspondent expected. So for the placebo and no, I have an observed of 129 minus an expected of 138.93. I'm going to square that difference and then I'm going to divide by that expected of 138.93. So I will do that for each of the cells. So my next cell, placebo, and yes, they have a middle ear infection. I have 49 minus 39.07, squaring, and then dividing by 39.07. So I'll continue to do that. I'll continue to do that for the rest of the table. Now that we have all the work, you will do the calculations for each of them separately and then add them together. So for the first cell, the 129 minus 138.93, I would do all of that work and come up with a individual cell chi-square of 0.71. So I'll continue to do that for the rest of the cells. Now I will sum them all up. One thing that you should know is these last two cells had very little difference between them. So technically they're not zero, they're just very, very small, so past the hundreds place. So because of that, I'm going to hold their place with the point zero zero, but realize that they're too small to actually affect our chi-square test statistic. So after I'm done, I calculate a chi-square equal to 6.68. So now because I have a chi-square, I have two degrees of freedom, I'm going to find my p-value using the chi-square CDF. So we come up with a p-value of 0 0.035. Because the p-value is less than alpha, I'm going to make the decision to reject the null. And remember in step 5, you're always restating your alternative. So here, because we rejected the null, step 5 will be there is sufficient evidence to suggest. And then if there is a relationship, the relationship between xylitol and middle ear infections for daycare children.